Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Waves slamming the seawall. The requirements to buy a house here is flood insurance. Homeowners brace for the possibility of more flooding thanks to the wind and rain. And this could be the theme of the summer. Ben? Kim, most of us missed out on the rain today, but not so much tomorrow. Why most of us will end up with more than an inch of rain. We'll talk about when this wraps up coming up. We'll have weather coverage in just a moment, but we begin with breaking news. You may soon start saving money on your auto insurance. Tonight, the state house in session at this hour set to vote really at any minute now on a bill to reform what we pay. Let's get to Mara McDonald, who's live at the state capitol rotunda in Lansing to break down where things stand tonight. Mara. Devin, they are in session right now. The Dems are still caucusing. Governor Gretchen Whitmer was just in the Democratic caucus, so we expect they're going to take a couple more minutes, but that vote on this bill is imminent. Now, here's the deal. What passed out of the Senate yesterday is different than what we're looking at in the House tonight, and there are several key differences, so let's take a look at some of those, starting with the most key element of your auto insurance. It's called the PIP. It stands for Personal Injury Protection Plan. What we all have now is an unlimited lifetime PIP in our no-fault insurance system. What the House is proposing is to give you PIP choice, more PIP choice than the Senate did. For example, you can opt out of the PIP, have none. You can have it at a $50,000 level, $250,000 level, $500,000 level, and new tonight, they would allow you, if you wanted to pay for it, to keep that unlimited medical benefit. They're also putting in a mechanism in here to try and cut down on medical fraud, which has become a huge issue in this state. They are saying that if you suffer injuries in a car accident or something related to auto, that you have to go to an accredited legitimate medical facility for treatment. And then finally, and this is the biggie, because what passed out of the Senate yesterday did not have this. The House has a mechanism in this bill that demands a mandatory rate rollback, meaning an insurer could not sell you a plan unless it had that rollback in it. What does that rollback look like? Well, it all depends on what kind of plan or PIP you decide to purchase. For example, you choose that $250,000 option, you're looking at about a 60% rollback in your PIP. The savings would be about $720. That's an average. Some will be more, some will be less. But right now, that's what's on the table. We expect maybe another amendment to show up before the final vote. Let's wait and see. But we're expecting that vote imminently. And what sources are telling us right now, it will pass. It will pass with bipartisan support. The question is exactly what that bipartisan support looks like. For example, will there be any Detroit Democrats on this? Wait and see. We're live at the Capitol tonight in the rotunda. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. And is it something the governor can support? Because she was not wild about the Senate plan, which is why she's working the floor, obviously, tonight. All right, Mara, we'll keep following what's going on in Lansing. All right, now to our other top story, the weather and more flooding here in Metro Detroit. Scenes like this one playing out along the shores of Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie tonight. The next threat is more rain tomorrow. We're going to check in with Ben in just a minute. Let's start, though, with Jermont Terry, who's live in Frenchtown Township. It's been so dramatic to watch this all day, Jermont. You're right, Devin. I'm standing in it right now. You talked about those winds within the last hour they have truly picked up and they are whipping the waves right over the seawall um, essentially right the high waves are a sight to see along lake erie but when the strong tide crashes outside your front door let's just say it catches your attention lake erie's got a way of taking over sometimes doug schrayer and his family once again are dealing with inches of water around their yard we gotta get our boots, waders sometimes. This here, just the boots. He and so many others are hoping it stays that way. You know, it's what we gotta deal with. Lake Erie is real high this year, so um, really isn't much we can do about it. Lake levels are expected to peak a 30 year high for the month of May. Experts say with the levels this high, it's a greater concern. Pumps work overtime to clear the flooded streets. It pleases Doug and his neighbors, especially Larry Dystra, who's watching this water rise for the first time. Well, we bought this house uh, last Tuesday, and uh, 
enjoy the area, but it looks like we got some issues with water. Despite knowing about the flood problems here in Fridgetown Township and watching those tides. Going up over almost as high as the house is over there. Larry's optimistic it's a smart purchase deal. The requirements to buy a house here is flood insurance, so uh, if it floods, we we'll just have to deal with it then. And tonight, people are hoping that they do not have to file another claim with their flood insurance. Again, as I was saying, within the last hour, the winds truly started to pick up here, and they are whipping these waves right over this wall. As you saw, people are just watching closely and hoping that the winds will die down and that we don't see any more rain. Of course, Ben Bailey, you have the answer to what will really happen. Let's send it over to you. Wow, that is incredible pictures there in Monroe County and those wind gusts right now behind you 31 miles per hour. That's the latest that we've clocked. It's one of the higher speeds that we have seen all day. Yes, they will subside tonight, but it's going to be a very slow process in doing so. You go further up the lakeshore, 24 in Gross Hill, 25 miles an hour at City Airport. No gusts being clocked here at Mount Clemens and Port Huron, but still some sustained winds as we go through the evening. So those lakeshore flood warnings for Monroe and Wayne County still in effect until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Macomb County, you're under that flood warning until 2 p.m. And remember, this is just the lakeshore not the entire county. St. Clair and also Santa Lai County Lakeshore flood advisories until 2 p.m. on Thursday. And now we got to start talking about rain. We missed out on it today. This is what's coming tomorrow. And I want to show you some of the latest data we're getting in. And what this tells us is that most of us are going to get between a quarter and three quarters of an inch. However, there's there's potential in this system to get upwards of two. In fact, this model is painting some bullseyes of over three inches of rain. That's a very slight possibility, but it's there. I wouldn't pay any attention to the location of that because the model really can't predict that with any accuracy. But there is definitely some more potential in these uh, in these rainfall forecasts than what we've seen before. We'll talk more about that in your Mother's Day forecast coming up, guys. All right, then. New at 11 here, a rideshare driver has been arrested for allegedly assaulting a passenger. Detroit police tell us the driver picked up a woman in Westland, then drove her to a location on Detroit's east side where she says she was assaulted. He was taken into custody this morning in Clinton Township. The investigation is ongoing. Very tragic story out of a small community near the Michigan-Indiana state line. A nine-year-old boy is accused of murdering his adoptive mother in Fawn River Township. The boy allegedly shot Pauline Randall with a rifle Monday. The boy's adoptive sister says he was on medication for mental issues. The boy is facing murder and gun charges, though because of his age, he will likely undergo psychological exams first. It's a story of horror and heroism. Tonight, we're getting to hear from a student who put his life on the line to stop a school shooter in Colorado. It's not a decision. It was just go. Brendan Biley and two other students rushed the shooter as he opened fire inside of a suburban Denver charter school yesterday. Today, 18-year-old Devin Erickson appeared in court, accused of shooting nine students, killing one of them. That victim is 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo, who students say was shot as he charged toward the shooter. Someone entered the building with incredibly malicious intent, uh, using their cowardice, surprise, and superior weapons, and they lost. They completely and utterly lost to good people. And that is plain and simple. Police rushed in and took down that shooter. They say he carried out the attack with a younger female classmate. She, though, has not yet been identified. Communication specialist and public relations guru Bob Berg has died. Berg's career spanned nearly four decades working with the likes of former Michigan Governor Bill Milliken and, of course, former Detroit Mayor Coleman Young. Berg is survived by three children, four grandchildren, and his longtime partner, Wanda Brock. Bob Berg was 76 years old. Peter Van Dyke took over his firm. Peter loves to tell the stories of, the, of Bob's sayings and rules. And one, the number one was, when you really need a friend, it's too late to make one. Oh, that's <laughs> Which great. Which was just great. And <laughs> Bob had a million of those. He was yeah. so, he meant so much Don't to so many people in Detroit. It's a big debate in football as concerns over concussions grow. Tonight, there's a big change to how much contact high schoolers in Michigan can have during practice. We'll talk about that. Then a man says something in his kitchen exploded and he's not the only one. The popular cooking item being blamed for serious injuries across the country. But coming up first, it's part of the recycling process you probably never think about. If we spot a garbage bag full of material, it's just going in the trash. 
what you can do to make things easier for plant workers as we take an inside look at what it takes for your recyclables to make it back into the system. Tomorrow at 5, a handcuffed teen punched by police. Now his grandmother breaks her silence. I thought it was terrible. I thought it was really terrible that they shouldn't have, shouldn't have did that. Speaking exclusively to the defenders. And was handcuffed behind him, and the police kept beating him and beating him and beating him. And sharing her concerns about a lack of funding for families and training for professionals. Tomorrow on Local 4 News.